I hear you all going, but Jenna, what about your second rule where you can only work on one personal project at a time? Don't worry, I don't actually think you sound like that. But, oh shoot, I nearly lost it. Um, Hi guys, and welcome to episode 9 of the Peach and Page podcast. My name is Jenna Jensen, or you may otherwise hear me call JJ. I am the owner and designer of Peach and Page, which is a crochet and knitting pattern store business uh, label. Uh, I also sell uh, stitch markers and do this podcast uh, as well. Uh, I live here in the Adelaide Hills in South Australia, where I live with my husband and my three kids. Uh, it's a beautiful summer day here in the Adelaide Hills. It's, uh, it's about 22 degrees outside, which I think is about 71 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, if anyone is not using the metric system. Uh, if you are a return viewer, then uh, thank you so much for coming back for the ninth time. Um, I know it has been three weeks since my last podcast, but thank you for sticking with me and uh, and coming back to see what I'm up to. And if you are joining me for the first time, uh, then welcome. I uh, really hope you enjoy today's podcast um, it, and that you do get something out of it and learn a little bit more about um, what is going on in the world of um, my Peach and Page brand. If you do like today's podcast, um, please do feel free to watch some of the previous episodes. Um, as I said, this is episode nine, so I've been around for a little while now. Um, and, uh, and do like and subscribe as well. So uh, that way I know that people are watching, people are enjoying um, the podcast, and, uh, and I know to keep doing them, I guess. Um, I have hit over 100 subscribers now, <laughs> uh, which I'm really, really happy about. Um, so thank you if you have watched and you have taken the time to like and subscribe. If you do subscribe to my channel, all that means is that you will get notified uh, if you um, if I put up a new video. So um, that way you'll know that I've got a, a new podcast up ready for you to watch. And I think you can click like a notification button or something as well. Um, and that will even send a notification to your phone when I, when I upload a new video. So please do go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, if you want to be notified when I do my podcasts, um, where you can find me. So uh, obviously I have my website um, down here at peachandpage.com. I am also very, very active on Instagram and my Facebook site. Um, I sell my patterns on Etsy. If you are someone that prefers buying off of Etsy as opposed to a website. And finally, last but not least, I am now also on Ravelry. I have sold my patterns on Ravelry for um, a little while now, um, but I haven't really been active in the Ravelry community. So that is something that um, was sort of my goal, I suppose, for 2020 was to get into Ravelry and um, learn a little bit more about it and how it works and get involved in the Ravelry community. Um, so what I have done is um, I have started a, um, a Ravelry group. Um, so there is now a Peach and Page Ravelry group on um on Ravelry. Uh, so what that group will have is obviously um, uh, every time there's a podcast there'll be a topic put up for that podcast which will include show notes and um, give you an opportunity to have any sort of discussions or ask any questions regarding a particular podcast. Um, on there as well is an introduce me thread uh, so an opportunity for you to pop on over and just tell me a little bit about yourself because I love getting to know, you know, I've got these regular people that really follow me now and I, I see them pop up on Instagram and Facebook and, and YouTube regularly and I know that they do sort of uh, actively follow the Peach and Page uh, journey that I am on. So uh, it's a great opportunity for me to learn a little bit about you guys, um, seeing as you have learned so much over the last year or so about me. Um, also on there, I've got a promote me thread. So um, feel free to pop down if you are a designer or a maker or uh, anything yarn crafty um, feel free to um, self-promote and um, you know put down if you've got your own podcast or anything like that um, I will be going through and checking you out and if you do promote yourself down there um, I will certainly be making sure that I um, actively follow you on um, 
you know instagram or, or youtube if you're a podcaster or what have you as well um and give my love back to you that way um so please do check that out um details for how to get to that group uh, is below but yeah all my my patterns are on on ravelry as well if you like to um purchase your patterns through there and um add your own projects and notes and things like that um uh i'll talk a little bit more about the other reason that i've created a ravelry group uh, a little bit later in the podcast um so uh, oh um so regarding um my subscribers so as i said um also i have now got um 100 subscribers on youtube um which was sort of my first milestone that i wanted to meet so obviously my next milestone is 200 and so on and so forth um but to celebrate having uh 100 subscribers on youtube i will be doing a pattern giveaway uh today um which i will talk about a little bit later on in the podcast so you will have to actually watch today's podcast to get the details for that giveaway so um i'll talk a little bit more about that later on um so yes obviously it has been uh three weeks since my last podcast so i do apologize uh i was meant to do a podcast um two week uh, last week so it's meant to be a fortnightly podcast um but for those of you that have been watching me regularly would know that that never seems to happen and so they always seems to come up um so it has once again been three weeks it is my mission this year to try and make this a fortnightly podcast and i am working towards it um the reason um i've been having some issues with doing my regular podcasts is because um i used to do this podcast while my um two-year-old slept in the afternoon um and while my eldest two children were at school um however um i came across the issue where he started dropping his naps so as a result um, trying to find time to be able to do my podcast was getting really difficult um, the last podcast I did I did in the evening so I was sort of testing um, I was, I've sort of been playing around with different options to try to find something that's going to work best um, so I thought all right well let's let's try do it in the evenings so I had lights that I could set up um, so I set up my lights and um, tried doing an evening podcast which was fine um, but even watching the podcast back I could tell that it was late at night i was tired um i just did not have the energy um and enthusiasm that i want to have because i'm really enthusiastic about my business and about everything i do so um it it just wasn't going to work i was it was just too tired too long of a day um by the time he was in bed and i was set up i wasn't podcasting until 8 30 9 o'clock at night and i'd been up since you know 5 36 a.m in the morning um and so it just wasn't going to work so um Plan B, um, which will be going into effect starting next week, is that I will be looking to have my youngest in like a family daycare or uh, like an occasional care type thing on Thursday mornings um, because obviously he's at childcare full time Monday, Tuesday and Wednesdays where I, I work a nine to five job. Um, so I now I don't I have Thursdays and Fridays off, um, but I'm going to get him into um, care on thursday mornings um so my thursday mornings will be free during the week because my oldest will be at school and my youngest will be at the occasional care um so i'm hoping moving forward that thursday mornings will be a regular time that i can do my fortnightly podcast and get back onto a really nice fortnightly schedule uh that being said that doesn't start till next week at the moment because my son is still through this transition period, he happened to decide to have a nap this afternoon. So uh, as soon as he was showing signs of being tired, I'm like, crap, let's get organised, let's try and get a podcast done, because I didn't know when I was going to get it done this weekend, and I didn't want to pull it, I like stretch it out a whole nother week. Um, so quickly put my face on, did my hair, put together sort of a bit of a script so I know what I'm going to be going through, um, and I don't forget anything. And he's gone down for a nap and here I am podcasting, hopefully before he uh, wakes up. Um, I've also got some new lights, so you might notice that there's a bit more um, light on my face. Um, so hopefully that's going to help improve the production quality a little bit 
I'm also making sure that I now look at the camera as opposed to myself on the screen. So I am working on that. We're getting there. 2020 is going to be my year. I keep saying that. So um, that's about it for introductions and what's going on and where I'm at with the podcast. So uh, please do grab a whip if you've got one. Sit back, relax, enjoy the podcast. I've got lots of little bits and pieces to show you today. Um, got the giveaway at the end of the podcast. Grab yourself something nice and um warm to drink a coffee or tea if that's your um your taste or something nice and cool uh, something to nibble on and enjoy the rest of today's podcast so i'm gonna grab a mouthful of coffee because i don't think i took a single breath in the last 10 minutes oh well that's a bit hot oh okay so as usual, I'm going to start off with finished objects. So um, I have only got two finished objects and they're nothing that you haven't really seen before. So my finished object se segment, I suppose, um, this podcast is going to be a little bit dull. Um, so, and you would have seen these before. So obviously something that um, is quite big at the moment is my upcoming pattern release. Um, for a bonnet that I'm working on so you would have seen this quite a bit if you haven't just stumbled across me randomly today before watching this podcast this is a crocheted cabled bonnet um, that I've been um, writing the pattern up on I'm going to give you a bit more of an update um, uh, later on in the podcast when I discuss business happenings um, as to where I'm at um, but I have completed this one in the last three weeks um, these bonnets, honestly, they take, they get, I'd finish them off in a day. Um, they're really quick and easy to make. This one is using, um, luxury eight ply by Bendigo woolen mills, um, which is a beautiful, uh, wool that is available just here in Australia. I find as an eight ply, it is quite thick. Um, so I am being really careful when, uh, pattern writing to make sure that I take that into account, um, because using a thicker than average yarn when you're writing a pattern and writing out gauge obviously is going to have an impact on a lot of people that then pick up that pattern um, and try to use other yarns and wonder why they're not meeting gauge so um that was one that i um completed for the purposes of taking photos <clears throat> in my pattern so all my patterns are very very um heavily illustrated uh, and this one's a zero to three month size so that was one finished object that I um, completed and my second finished object is another one so um, this one I think was three to six months I believe um, this yarn um, is actually one that um, I haven't used any in a little while I picked up a whole bunch of the can't remember what they're called bear with me that's it the style craft baltic baltic i still i still don't know how to bloody pronounce it um but it's a lovely stone washed wool, which is 80% premium acrylic, 20% wool. Um, I did mine in, I don't know what the shade was called, um, but it's a grey and it's actually very subtle stone. You can't, you can barely even see it in real life, to be honest, let alone on the camera. Um, it almost looks like a flat colour, but it does, um, in real life, you can tell that there are a few little specks where it's a little bit darker gray but it's very very subtle actually i wish i wanted to because of the details in the cable um i try while i like working with variegated yarns and yarns with um different colors and hand dyed yarns and things like that um i am very conscious that if i've got a pattern that's really texture heavy uh, or has some really defined texture in it that um i don't want a yarn that's going to take away from that so but I wanted to make a bonnet up in in the Baltic 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 
um, that I've got because I've got so much of the damn stuff and um, there's so many beautiful colors up there and I sort of regret making it in this color um, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about where this pattern is at um, a little bit later in um, in the podcast so they're the only two actual finished objects I have um, from a knitting crochet point of view anyway um, so next I will go into whips um, before I talk about that um, last podcast um, I had a bit of a chat about how um, 2020 I am um, obviously now doing my stitch markers um, but I've also wanted to um, get a bit more organized about what I'm doing I found uh, last year uh, I, I can get really sporadic or I can jump from one thing to the other and the problem with that and I think a lot of creative people have this exact same issue and I've discussed this before um, that uh, I really struggle to focus on any one thing at a very at any given time I get bored really really easily uh, and so um, working on patterns, uh, working on projects, especially bigger, more time consuming projects is a real, real big struggle for me. Um, and I am uh, notorious for uh, as soon as I think of something, I'm constantly thinking of new patterns and new things I want to do. And um, I got into a habit of every time I thought of something new, I would drop everything I was doing and start working on it. Um, and what that has resulted in is that I have a backlog of probably 10 plus patterns that I've designed. I've made one sample of, but I've never written the pattern down or finished it. So there's sort of all these started patterns um, that uh, I, I've created and worked on. And I want to now revisit and write the pattern up, grade the sizes, do all of that. Um, and so this year, my focus was about uh, how can I manage this? And so uh, the goal was obviously to put a few rules into place. So rule one um, is that um, I can only be working on one pattern at any given time. I wasn't going to go crazy and be like, I can only work on one project at a time because I knew that was going to drive me insane and I wasn't going to enjoy it and I was going to rush things just to get them done. But I, I'm only allowed to work on one pattern that I'm writing at any given time so if I'm working on a particular pattern that I'm writing up um, sending out to testers what have you I'm not allowed to start or work on any other patterns um, that being said I am allowed to be working on a personal project so they're my more long-term projects so um, I've got my t-shirt which I'll show you um, in a minute which I still haven't finished but I'm super close um, so like my t-shirt that I'm working on, projects that I'm working on for myself, um, or family and friends, um, those projects will generally be patterns that are written by other designers. Um, another goal that I had this year was that I would always be working at any given time, always working on a design from another designer. Uh, because I've always written my own patterns, I, um, I'm only familiar with my own work, my own way of doing things. I, I, I've always just sort of learnt myself by trial and error um, so I really want to spend some more time working with some other designers and successful designers and seeing how they work and some techniques that they use that I may not have come across before especially in the knitting side of things um, where I don't have as much experience and it, the patterns are a lot more complex and the techniques are a lot more complex um, than it is with crochet uh, and so um, that was rule two that I, I can only work on one personal project at a time um, and uh, rule three was that I was going to set out a schedule so last week I showed or last podcast I should say I showed you my schedule um, which basically says you know Mondays I do this Tuesdays I do this so Tuesdays is um, I know off the top of my head is Teen Titan Tuesday so that's when I work on my Teen Titans blanket which I'll talk about in a minute um and then there'll be a night that I do my stitch markers there'll be a night that I work on uh, a peach and page pattern there'll be a night that I work or a day that I work on um, a personal project and then weekends are free game so depending on if we've got events on I don't have to stress that that's my day to do such and such um 
but that's just going to help ho hopefully keep me in a, a routine and make sure that I'm not getting bored things are mixed up um you know I've got enough going on to keep me interested and keep me entertained um but I'm still actually achieving stuff as opposed to just adding to my pile of things to finish so that being said um the last two weeks um, have sort of been my first test of trying to use this schedule. Um, the first week I didn't because I was in the lead up to um, my stitch marker release, which I'll talk about uh, a bit later. So all my focus was just working on stitch markers, stitch markers, stitch markers. I didn't do any crocheting. I didn't do any knitting. Um, the second week I tried to follow my schedule. Um, and I think for the most part I actually did. I, I I followed it to the T. I did my Teen Titans blanket on Teen Titan Tuesday. I um, I got my personal project out again, which I hadn't worked on in ages. Um, started getting my pattern organised. Uh, like picked a pattern that I was going to focus on and get finished, um, which is that bonnet. So that was my my pattern one that I'm working on, and it works really well. Um, then what happened last weekend, which is when I was meant to be filming a podcast I got glutened so which you might have seen in my stories um so if you don't know what I mean by that I'm a celiac I've been I was diagnosed celiac about four years ago um and so what that means is I can't eat anything that contains uh wheat barley um oats malt those things so anything that has gluten um, because the gluten protein triggers an autoimmune reaction makes me really really unwell um, and unfortunately while while the last um, while there's sort of been a learning curve my, my eldest daughter has it as well um, so we are pretty good with um, eating gluten free and what have you but probably two times a year two to three times a year probably tops um, I will for one reason or another accidentally get exposed um, it's just a part of life. Um, luckily for me, um, it doesn't cause like an anaphylactic reaction like you might get with nuts. So it's not it's not life threatening at all, um, but it does make me very, very, very unwell. Um, um, and basically I um, will profusely vomit for hours on end um, while my body panics thinking I've consumed some sort of poison um, and expels everything. Um, so for about three hours straight, I'll vomit upwards to 15, 20 times, um, even though there's nothing left, um, which will leave me feeling very broken and bruised for a couple of days. It's, it's a really unpleasant thing to go through, um, and there's nothing I can do about it. The culprit this time, unfortunately, uh, no one to blame but myself. Um, usually when I get gluten, it's because I've gone to... A restaurant um, and they haven't understood or there's been cross-contamination things like that um, this time was by no one's fault but my own I um, picked up sugar-free cookies from the health section at Coles um, to the supermarket the health section um, is where I usually get all my gluten-free related stuff they had all their gluten-free cookies and right next to their gluten-free cookies they had sugar-free cookies um, because I guess they fall under the health food section as opposed to putting them three aisles over in the biscuit and cookie section they put them along with all my gluten-free stuff and I think you can work out what happened um I bought said sugar-free cookies I ate said sugar-free cookies only two of the little blighters and um two hours later lying in bed I realized what had happened because I started to feel sick and there's nothing you can do then but just wait it out um so I think, um, yeah, I was crook until I think about 2, 3 a.m. I finally died down enough that I could pass out, fall asleep. Uh, but then I felt lousy until about Wednesday. So that was Saturday night. Um, so that's why I didn't podcast last week. And then obviously because I felt lousy until Wednesday, that threw my schedule out last week. So I've only sort of got back into getting stuff done really yesterday, Wednesday and yesterday onwards. Um, today being Friday, which I never mentioned, today's Friday the 17th of January, I think I skipped that in my spiel at the beginning, I apologise, um, yes, so, whips, so with my schedule, I have been working on a, um, a few bits and pieces, so, um, 
whip number one with my personal project that um that i'm working on at the moment that i'm very near finished um oh that's what i forgot to grab i'll have to pause the camera and grab that in a minute um so my t-shirt which i've only done a few more rows on from when you saw it last time so this is t-shirt romantique by i can't remember so i'll put it down the bottom uh there it is it's getting really hard to show that's how big it is you can see it is pretty much all but full length now that's actually the back of it it's got a b back it's a v back rather um and straight across the front so that's that's the front it looks a bit vesty but it does actually have sleeves um they will be more obvious once it is um blocked there are tiny little cappy sleeves i suppose you would call them um so down the back uh at the moment obviously i'm just working down my length um there's decreases that i've got to do um so i've almost done my decreases actually i wonder where this is up on oh, I wonder if i can get back far enough yeah. my tippy toes yeah still need a few it's just sort of at the top of my hip bones so i probably want sort of another another couple of inches on it but yeah um, so I think I've got, um, I've got to do 14 decreases, which is what I've marked out with my light bulb markers. So there's 14, I think I've done 12. Um, so they're my decreases there. There's one of my little, my little stitch markers too. My little taco, taco, taco. Um, and so once I've done my 14 decreases, then it's just straight knitting in the round until uh, I've got the length I desire. So I really could easily get this finished. Well, I should get it finished this week if I stick to my schedule um, because i got one night that's dedicated to... Um, that's better. One night that's dedicated to uh, working on my personal project. So I should get it finished. Um, I usually do it when I'm at the laundromat. And I have it uninterrupted time. There's another stitch marker while I'm here that I've got as well. My little strawberry cake. Which is quite cute. So these are my new... Come back. These are my new stitch markers that I am making now. Um, that I'll talk about a little bit later. But they're all available on my website. So, yes, so that's where I'm at with that one. Hopefully, next podcast, certainly next podcast, because that's two weeks, unless something oh, drastically happen, you know, goes wrong, which, knowing me, heaven forbid, probably will happen, um, that should be finished, and I'll hopefully be wearing it. Hmm. So... That's my t-shirt. Um, my um, next finish uh, whip. Uh, so uh, my Teen Titan blanket. So I'm not going to bring it down today. Um, uh, if you want to see it, please refer back to previous podcasts. I think two podcasts ago, actually, I brought it down. Uh, so podcast number seven um it's a very large um charted single crochet blanket um using multiple colors that i started like two years ago put it aside um and hadn't worked on it and i made a vow last week that i keep saying last week i mean last podcast um a vow last podcast that i was going to get back into it get started get moving with it again and uh my designated day to do that was tuesday so not last Tuesday because I was crook, but the Tuesday before I was going to do it. I got it out. The whole, one of the main reasons that it's been sidelined is because it got spilt, covered in beer, had to go through the wash. Um, as I've explained previously, had to go through the wash, end up this big tangled mess. So then it sat there for ages until um, my best friend, um, bless her, 
decided she would help me untangle the darn thing. So we sat down and it, I can't even remember. It took us literally like two hours. It was insane uh, to untangle this goddamn blanket. I got the thing all untangled. Um, but then the issue that I also had um, that I knew about before it had been spilt on um, was that uh, my last two rows weren't adding up um, because the the it comes as both a graph and a written pattern so it's got the graph which obviously is just your squares with your different colors and then it's got a written pattern that goes with it that's you know uh, row five um, you know five red three yellow four dark purple three black and it, it breaks it all down and, and how many stitches of each color and the row I was on for some reason um wasn't um wasn't adding up right um and um I couldn't work out anyway I frogged back um a row and what I discovered was that one of um when I did a color change the um I think I accidentally skipped a stitch or when I did a color change I pulled it too tight um, so the first stitch of the new color was really, really small, um, which is why when it was in front of me and I was counting it, I could see the stitch. But when it was down here and I was actually working on it, the stitch was invisible and I kept skipping it. So that's why no matter how many times it was doing my head in because I would count it and it would add up. But then when I was working on it and doing the next row, I was always one short or one too long. You know what I mean? Um, and I couldn't work out what I was, I was going insane. Um, but yes, I worked out what had happened. I pulled this stitch too tight. And so it was almost impossible to see from the top. Um, but you could see it from the side. So, um, frogged that, fixed that. I managed to get five new rows done, which I was really happy about. That's, I mean, five rows doesn't sound like much, but this blanket takes forever. Five rows took me two and a half hours. So it's, it takes about half an hour a row, two and a half hours. Yeah, half an hour a row. Um, so it's, it's not a quick project. So that was one, one night's worth of work. Um, but yes, I hope to do that work on that every Tuesday and get it finished because I am about 50 rows in, 55 rows in, and it's like a four, 500 row blanket. So I've got a lot to do. Oh, that's probably a bit of an exaggeration. I'd probably be about between a quarter and a third of the way through. Probably not as bad as I think it is. I did just hear my son talking on the baby monitor, so I hope he stays asleep for me. I think he's stirring. He is still lying down. I could hear some banging. We'll see how we go. Probably got about half hour to go. All right, let's hu hustle through. Um, next whip. So, um, because my bonnet pattern um, is, uh, I'm, I'm no longer needing to do any work on that. I've done all my work for that. It's not released yet. I'll talk about them more later. Um, but that means that now I'm allowed to start working on a new pattern. So today I started working on my next pattern, which is going to be a nice, quick, short, sharp and sweet one. Um, I think I mentioned this one oh, originally in episode two or three of my podcast, The Dancing Cactus. Um, so this is The Dancing Cactus. Um, and that's all I've done. But I've fixed the chart. I've remade the chart in Excel. So the story um, with this one, it's a cactus pillow, basically. Um, I uh, had made the cactus pillow. I did the two sides. It's two sides that are made separately, identical. Um, you lay them on top of each other. You single crochet around the edge of the cactus, um, leaving a gap so you can stuff it full of polyfiber um, and then sew it closed. Um I had made the cactus, I'd made my two sides. I On the second side, however, when I went to go sew it together, I realised that I'd put one of the arms upside down. So instead of the cactus having its little arms like this, like cactus normally do, one of its arms was like this. And so it was. It looked a bit silly. Um, and I also wasn't happy about the size. Once I finished it up and I realised 
the tricky thing when they're designing pillows um and you might notice if you ever make pillows when you complete it and it, it looks like it's really out of shape um you have to remember that the shape when it's lying flat um is only indicative of what it actually looks like when it pumps up so generally um because i've got a heart pillow and a cactus pillow that i've released so far um i also have a mountain range pillow which i haven't released that's on my to release list um but you'll notice if you especially with my heart pillow when you make the heart it looks um, unusually wide and a really odd sort of shape and it, it there's a really low like wide gap at the top of that heart bit you know the what do you call it? like the heart point um it's a real like u shape um and when you do it you might think oh this is going to be a really ugly shaped heart um but when you stuff it and it plumps up it sort of gets into its right shape it sort of shrinks in the sides um and the gap at the top sort of plumps out so it's a nice little point and so it takes a lot of trial and error to get that right because when you're designing you can only design laying flat and it's not until you finish it and stuff it can you see what it looks like and then you've got to try tweak it so a bit of an insight into writing patterns um so anyway i made my two sides and um before i frogged it i had a look at it and was sort of sort of plumping it out with my hands to see what it would look like shaped um and it's just too narrow i want my cactus to be nice and fat short and chunky um so it's nice and cuddly like it's it's a cute fat cactus um sort of more of a cartoony cactus i guess than a, than a realistic shaped cactus yeah so i frogged the whole damn thing um and there's no cactus left but um, I've had a play around with my graph and I've made it a bit wider, a tiny bit taller, made the arms a bit closer to the body so it wasn't quite as stretched out. I won't know how it's going to look until I complete it and stuff it. Um, I may still need to tweak it, but that's all part of pattern designing. Um, if you only like making things once, pattern designing is not for you. Uh, so yes. That is my next whip and you will probably see that in all but completion next fortnight because um, because it's a pillow I don't have to worry about making multiple sizes it's just the one so that's a really nice quick easy um, pattern to finish and then that adds to my pillow collection um, that I have along with my heart pillow uh, which I've sold a crap load of um, and my little cloud pillow as well so they're really cute little nursery items so that's what's happening with my cactus pillow. So there's that whip. Um, and last but not least, my last whip, I'm going to have to pause the camera because I forgot to bring it down beside me. So I'm going to go grab my um, last whip and have a chat about that. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so my last whip, which I started just last night at the laundromat, is a um, new pair of socks. Now, I hear you all going, but Jenna, what about your second rule where you can only work on one personal project at a time? Don't worry, I don't actually think you sound like that. But, oh shoot, I nearly lost it. Um, um, I have a completely legitimate excuse for why I started a new personal project. I know we're only two weeks into January and I'm already breaking my 2020 rules. Don't judge me, I'm only human. So... I had to go to the laundromat because our uh, washing machine's busted at the moment. Whole another story. Not going to go there. Completely not living related. But had to go to the laundromat. And I'm stuck there for like an hour and a half. So naturally, I take my knitting with me, chuck my headphones in, listen to podcasts, things like that. It's great. It's me time. I actually thoroughly enjoy it. It's really sad. So went out to the laundromat. Um, I needed a project that I could take with me. Now, um, I've finished my bonnet. I hadn't yet started my cactus, so normally I would take my personal project. But the issue I've got with my personal project at the moment is that I've only got about two rows, two, three rows left until I finish my decreasing. Then I need to um, try it on so I know how much longer I've got to do. And obviously I can't do that at the laundromat. I, there's no mirror there for me to be standing there like testing my sizing every couple of rows. Um, and even if there was a mirror there, I probably wouldn't do that because I have some dignity. It's bad enough being the chick that's knitting at the laundromat. So 
I might, well, I might as well get started on my new personal project because that one's going to be done soon and that's how I justified it. So my next personal project is just going to be a pair of socks. So you might think, oh, it's a bit boring, but I made a whole lot of socks over Christmas for gifts. I've never made myself some socks. So I really wanted to make some socks because I've sort of perfected my my sock recipe. Uh, I suppose you'd say as far as my favourite cast on, which is my, my wedge toe cast on using Judy's Magic cast on method, which I love. Um, and um, doing my afterthought heel and things like that. And I know how many stitches are around now. My... Um, my stitches have got a lot more relaxed when I first started knitting socks they were really really tight um, whereas my gauge is actually getting pretty spot on to um, the patterns and, uh, and other designers um, that I'm going by because um, I've only got a small foot so I should have about a 60 stitch foot on a 2.5 millimeter or a size 1 US needle um, and I was needing much larger so I knew my gauge was out but um, I've now got my gauge down to where I am actually fitting into a 60 stitch sock so I'm really happy about that um, I'm trying to think what yarn this was I got this yarn um, to make socks for Christmas presents I can't remember where I got this one from. Oh, this one, this was by Pacemaker Yarns. This one, Pacemaker Yarns, can't remember the colorway. Um, I have mentioned it in previous podcasts, so, so if you do like this colorway, it's a really nice just gray. It's just shades of gray, 50 shades of gray. Um, maybe that's what it was called. No, it wasn't. They should have. If I made yarn, that'd be what it's called, 50 shades of gray. Um, so I'm going to call these my 50 shades of gray socks now. Yeah. <laughs> So, my Fifty Shades of Grey socks. Um, so the reason I um, wanted to make socks for my next personal project is because I suppose the basis for me having personal projects as opposed to just working on my own stuff, one, obviously it breaks up the monotony of only working on my own things, um, but it also allows me to test my other designers' patterns, as I was mentioning before, and learn new techniques. So, um, especially with knitting. With knitting, um, one thing that I've never done before is any sort of lace work. Um, so I really wanted to um, have a play around with learning some lace work um, uh, um, patterns. Written out, I know all the stitches. I know how to, um, you know, do a yarn over. I know how to knit two together. I know how to make one right, make one left. I know all the steps, but I've never done a pattern that's actually utilised those types of stitches to create a, a lace stitch. So um, I wanted to pick a sock pattern. And this is where Ravelry is really great. Um, I suppose and this is why it's, it's used a lot for knitters, um, is that you can go into Ravelry and you they've got so many filters for finding patterns. So I knew I wanted um, a sock pattern. I knew I wanted it in a... Um, fingering weight yarn which is a, a standard sock yarn um i knew i wanted it to be a toe up sock because i don't know how to do toe down socks and i wanted to stick with what i know which is my my judy's magic cast on toe and i know how to do all that so i wasn't interested in learning a new toe so i selected i wanted toe up socks i wanted this and you can select attribute so i selected lace work so it came up with a whole bunch of socks that incorporated lace work that were using my yarn, using my needle, and um, were toe up. So I knew I could do my toe up and hopefully put an afterthought heel in um, if the pattern allowed, which most do. And the pattern I came across, it's a free pattern. It's called um, I Smell Snow. I'll put it up here. Um, it's apparently inspired by Gilmore Girls. I'll be honest, I've never really watched the show. Um, but it's a beautiful uh, sock. You can see it's got some really nice, delicate... Uh, lace work down either side um, it's not an all over lace I don't think it's going to be overly complicated because the re rest of the sock is just straight stockinette stitch um, so it's just going to be knitting in the round but it's, it's going to allow me to dip my toe pun completely intended um, dip my toes into lace work knitting socks 
um so as far as the whip goes i've literally i haven't even finished the increases on the toe but i started that last night so you're going to be seeing a bit more of that in upcoming podcasts as well so that is it for finished objects and whips um i haven't got any acquisitions today as far as um uh, new things that i've bought um, i haven't got any new yarn purchases or anything like that to show you um at the moment maybe next time um so business news um we will start with um the bonnet because i've been talking so much about this so where are we at so i mentioned i've finished my part of it so i um something else that i'm also doing in 2020 i know 2020 new me new picture page um Something else I wanted to do in 2020 was start using pattern testers. I didn't use pattern testers because when I first used pattern testers, um, when I was first starting out, I guess I, I didn't know how to set it up properly um, and um, I didn't utilise the right communities to get testers. I would just um, ask for people on Facebook and things like that as opposed to a Ravelry. Um, and uh, as a result... Um, my pattern testers were really crap. So they either um, didn't get it or they um, they just wouldn't complete it. They never got back to me. Um, so I'd send out patterns for pattern testing and I'd never hear both from them. So I'm like, well, this is stupid. People just ask for pattern testers to get free patterns. The whole thing's a scam. You know, I'm not fooling for this no more. And decided I would never patent test again. I would just rely on my own judgment. Um, fast forward... 12 months and I'm now patent testing a um, couple of reasons one obviously it's great from a commercial point of view for exposure you um, works the same as when I used to use brand reps when I was doing made to order um, you know give people something for free and they will um, subsequently um, advertise for you uh, in return um, and also send you photos that you can use for advertising um, so I am now using patent testers. Oh, yeah, and obviously the other reason for patent testers is that actually testing your patent. So you don't sell 100 versions of a pattern to find out that there's a massive error in it, which I have done. Um, my biggest two culprits were my boho crop top and my Charlie bib. Both of those patterns were released with some horrendous errors in them, um, and it's bit me in the butt because I spent a lot of time having to respond to people, sending them updated emails and things like that. So... Um, this sort of takes the onus off of um, me and knowing that it's been tested, people know it's been tested and so if people do have questions, my first thought isn't, oh crap, I've written something wrong in the pattern. So um, this is, so what's what's happened is obviously I'm, uh, if you follow me on Instagram and then uh, uh, what have you, you would have seen that I did put a call out for patent testers. Um, if you are interested in being a patent tester as well, um, I'll put the link below, but on my website, I've now got a, um, a form that you can fill out. Filling out that form um, just gives me your basic details um, and you go onto a database for patent testers. What then happens, and you will stay on that database until such time as you tell me that you don't want to be on the database anymore. Um, and so what happens is every time that I want a pattern um, to be tested rather than seeking out testers just for that pattern and going through the process of finding testers every time I can just refer back to my database um, and in my database I I check every single anyone that sent me an application I've checked you out um, I check out every single person I look at their Instagram I see if they're active on Ravelry because like I said while it's it's great to have someone test my pattern I also need to know that a they are actually an avid knitter and crocheter. I can see some of their work. Um, but B, I want to know that I am going to get um, some exposure from them as well, which is why I do give preference to people that um, have Instagram or, or, or are active on Ravelry. Um, and that's a fairly standard thing. Um, you'll see most patent testers will have that as a clause um, that you are required to post or um, you will be given preference if you are active online. 
Um, so yeah, I've got my database and everyone's sort of ranked and um, you're sort of grouped off depending on if you like, if you're a crocheter or if you're knitwear or if you like children's wear or if you like adults wear. Um, so then when a new pattern comes up, I can refer back to my database and it's really quick for me to pick out, you know, my 10, 15 people, send you all out an email. Um, if you get an email and you, and that email sort of gives you a rundown of what the pattern's going to be like, how hard it is what the time frame's going to be. And if you're like, yep, I've you know got nothing big going on for the next two weeks and this is something I'd really like to make, um, then you can send me back an email saying, yep, I'm happy to test for this one. And then you become a, a, an official tester for that pattern. Um, and uh, then once the pattern is finished, so I've completed the pattern, I've written it up, it's all ready to go. Um, I'll then just send you out a copy of the pattern in the size that um, you've chosen because um, I'll, I'll ask you what size you'd prefer to do to try and make sure that I get a couple testers for each size um, if it's a, a graded pattern. Um, and then um, you have until the, the deadline basically to complete the pattern, um, complete my questionnaire which just says, you know, did you find any errors? Was it easy to read? You know, these usual yes or no questions. You don't, it's not an essay. Um, and send me back that along with photos of the finished item and, you know, any other feedback that you may have. Um, and obviously any photos that um, that I'm sent back, I um, have written approval to you reuse those photos. I'd always give credit. I'll make sure that your, um, your username's watermarked on the bottom of the photo. Um, but I can then use those photos in advertising, in Instagram posts and things for that, uh, or things of that nature. So with um, this bonnet, I should mention, first of all, um, the first step was for me to name this bonnet. Bonnet. So it has actually now officially got a name. Um, it is officially now called the Reagan Bonnet. So um, I had someone comment that it's, um, and, and as soon as they commented it, I'm like, it was so obvious. Um, I'm like, why has this not crossed my mind already? Um, they mentioned that this, this bonnet has a real Celtic feel to them and they'd like to see one done up in green. And I apologise, I, I didn't think before this podcast to check who it was that said that. So if you're watching this, thank you because you effectively helped me name my bonnet. Um, but I, I think it was on my Facebook. And they said, I'd love to see it in green. It's got this real sort of Celtic look. I'm like, sweet. That's, that's my direction I'm going to go in for naming it. Um, so I was just looking up common um, uh, Celtic names or, or popular Celtic names. Um, I wanted a name that was somewhat unisex um, because it is a unisex bonnet. So I didn't want to give it a super, super girly name um, to you know, subconsciously deter people. I mean, I know it's it's 2020 and gender's fluid and all of that, but it is it is a traditionally unisex um, name and a traditionally unisex style bonnet. It could go either way. Um, so uh, the Reagan bonnet. I'll put the spelling down there because it's... Oh, there's a fly in here. Um, I'll put the spelling down there. So the Reagan bonnet. I've finished the pattern written up this particular pattern had and i've mentioned this before um has a video aspect to it because the cabling is really hard to capture in photos and was really hard for me to explain so i thought you know what screw it i'm just going to do a video so i've created my video um the video is going to be on youtube however it's unlisted so what that means is that you've got no way of finding this video unless you have the actual link um or somehow managed to guess it, it's random numbers and letters. Um, so um, on the, the PDF pattern, when you purchase the PDF pattern, it will have written in there the link. So you can type that link into your, um, your computer address bar um, and it will take you to the unlisted YouTube video, which is the instructions. So that, um, I was having some issues with my computer encoding that um, video, but it's all finally done this afternoon. As soon as I finish this podcast, I'm going to be jumping on my computer and emailing that out to my testers who have already been chosen. That's all sorted. So um, that'll be going out this afternoon. So if you are a tester and you're watching this in two days time, you would have already received it by now. Uh, and I hope you're enjoying it. Um, as a tester, this was the other reason that I got a, um, a Ravelry group going um, is because of the Ravelry groups is a really good way to have a um, 
a common place for testers to be able to discuss. So in my group, you will see now that there is a group for um, testers for the Reagan bonnet. Um, if you're not a tester of the Reagan bonnet, please don't um, contribute in that particular um, for all that conversation. Um, that topic is designed um, just for the testers. Um, obviously, you can go have a look because you might see some sneak peek photos of, um, sorry, there's a bloody fly hanging around. Um, you might see some sneak peek photos of um, the Reagan bonnet in, uh, in process by the testers. Um, so you can have a little sneaky peek, but um, the, the purpose of that particular thread um, is for the testers to be able to discuss um, errors or, or have questions, you know, have you guys worked this out or, or what have you. Um, so that's where that one's at. Uh, testing um, finishes on the 3rd of February. So the testers have been advised that they need to finish the bonnet, have photos and everything back to me by the 3rd of Feb. So at this stage, 3rd of Feb will be the release date for the Reagan bonnet. Um, today's the 17th, so I will have... It'd be around podcast time, actually. I don't have a calendar in front of me, but it'll probably be getting pretty close to my next podcast. Because um, it's going to be two weeks from the 20th. I think it might be just after. I'll put it down here when I'm editing because I'll do the maths. So it may or may not be released by my next podcast. Um, um, but yeah, that's where that's at. So it's all very exciting. Um, I'm really liking this progress and, and I used to, another reason I didn't like using the testers is because I was so excited when I finished the pattern that I just wanted to release it. Um, but I think, um, because I'm going to test this doesn't mean that there's going to be bigger gaps between my patterns or there's going to be delay in releasing my patterns because while that's being tested, I'm now going to be working on my cactus pattern. So within a week or two, I'm going to be asking for testers for my cactus pattern. So even though my timeline is now, you know, a couple of weeks back, um, I'm still, I'm already working on my next project while I'm waiting for that one to be ready for release. So it's, it's um, I'm still going to be constantly creating patterns. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm stuck doing nothing for three weeks while I'm waiting for my pattern testers to get back to me. Um... So that's where that's at. Um, I feel like this is going to be a bit of a long podcast. So I'm going to really um, quickly try to finish up. I want to have a quick chat about the stitch markers. Um, so since last podcast, my stitch markers have been up for sale. Ah, oh, I'm so parched. And my coffee's really cold. Um... So my stitch markers were released on the 2nd of Jan. Um, I've sold, um, within the first 24, 48 hours, I sold like eight sets, which was amazing. Thank you so much. If um, any of you that are watching purchased a set of my stitch markers, that really meant a lot to me, um, that you guys were so excited and loved them. Um, uh, what's going to happen? Um, well, my plan is basically on the 1st of every month, I will be doing a shop update. So on the 1st of Feb, I will put up what I've worked on in January um, up for sale. And then no more will get added until the 1st of March. But obviously those that didn't get sold from the month before stay on there. So there will end up being quite a collection um, of bits and pieces on there. Um, what's up there at the moment are just full sets. So they're sets of five. I think there's one that's a set of six. Um, and they're all around the $24.99 mark which works out to about five dollars a stitch marker um which when you consider um how hard they are to bloody make um at the moment i'm quite happy with that price point um that being said i may be looking at um releasing some as single stitch markers um because they're really cheap to post because they can be posted as a letter um so it's only a couple bucks postage um regardless of how many you get so I might release um, release some as singles as opposed to a set. Um, so it'll be like a single stitch marker for five or six dollars, um, depending on the complexity of it. Um, so you can just buy one or two if you don't want to buy a full set of five and spend you know your twenty five dollars plus postage. Um, some of the ones that um, so you saw my taco. Some of these haven't got their um, 
their lever rings on them yet but you saw my my taco which i've got one on my project at the moment so it's my little quiet taco so they're quite cute um some other sneaky peeks so this one this one still has to be um polished and finished off but i've got a little a little egg so i'm thinking i might do this one in a set with some bacon and some coffee um and things like that um another one that you would have seen um is my blueberry cheesecake honestly some of these look good enough to eat they're so good so yummy oh, the little blueberries on there there's a nice little blueberry cheesecake um what else haven't you seen oh my little my little koalas. These ones haven't been polished up yet either. I got my little my little quite koalas, which are quite cute. Um, I don't think. Oh, you probably saw these on my ravel uh, on my on my page. Where I got my strawberries. They're nice and shiny, so they're cute. I've got little peaches, peaches for peach and page. And what else have I got that you might like? Uh, I've got little fairy bread. About Australian as it gets. And yeah, that's my fairy bread. Some more little, oops, some little strawberry donuts. Cute. So yeah, um, so I'll be doing my um next shop update on the first of Feb. Um, if there is a particular design of stitch marker that you want, um. I got little macaroons as well, which I've shown you before, I think. Um, if there is a particular sort of stitch marker that you want or a, a particular design um, that you're interested in, um, let me know um, because I'd be more than happy to um, to do some custom designs for people. I think you've seen these ones, my little chocolate cakes. So... Yes, so that's where stitch markers are at. So 1st of Feb will be the next update. You'll see some more sneak peeks um, of bits and pieces that I make. But if you do um, have any ideas of what um, other designs I could make or other things you would like to see, um, please comment down below um, and let me know. And let me know if you think I should release them as individual ones. Would you prefer, I don't know, if I would, if I was to buy, see, I would always buy them in sets. But I don't know if people would rather pick and choose. They might want the pink donut from that set and they might want a taco from that set. And um, so giving people the opportunity to pick and choose. And I still might, it might be a pick and choose and you still get five for 25 or $6 each. So that way you still get a discount for buying bulk amount, but at least lets you choose. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know what you think. Um uh so that's that um so last but not least um before i finish up um i mentioned at the beginning that i wanted to do a giveaway because i've reached 100 subscribers um hopefully even more after this podcast um so if you um would like to win a copy of my new reagan bonnet as it gets released possibly even before um as as a as a as a preview so like exclusive limited edition copy of the bonnet pattern um what you need to do is go to my ravelry group um you will need to um obviously join my ravelry group and there will be a thread there so my ravelry group th thread will say 100 subscriber giveaway go into that thread and all you need to do is um uh, post your um, a picture and a just quick description of your favorite crochet or knitting project that you've ever made so if you everyone has that you know one of their favorites I, I say everyone that being said I don't think I even have a favorite I have lots of favorites it's not that I don't like any of them I like all of them 
but if you've got a favorite post your favorite knitting or crochet project um, in the thread that way uh, you guys get to go through the thread and see the best of everyone's work which will be so exciting I cannot wait to have a look at what you guys have got um, but I will pick five winners um, from that and announce it probably next podcast yeah I'll do the next podcast is that that's going to kind of fall in line with the release of the pattern anyway and I'll send you a free copy of the brand new Reagan bonnet which will be tried and tested and you'll know it's perfect um so that's what's happening with the giveaway i'll put all the details down below if i you know buzz right through that and you've completely forgotten what i've said um i think that's about it um i don't want to spend too much time um personal stuff i do need to show you my nails because i show you my nails every single podcast look at these beauties these are my nails at the moment they're a week old i, I talk about them like they're babies a week old uh, so they're a baby blue with a matte coat and a nice glittery uh, feature now. That's what I was looking for. So I quite like the bright blue. I'm not normally a blue person, but I must say I do like these. Um, it's school holidays at the moment, so I'm losing my mind a little bit. We've got two weeks left until school goes back. Um, that being said, I do work Monday through Wednesday anyway, um, where my kids are at Osh. other than that we're just enjoying the sunshine um enjoying the fact that all the christmas and new year hoo-ha is over and we can just go back to enjoying our lives and relaxing and um that's about it there's really not much else going on to be honest just cruising through um really excited for what 2020 is going to bring for peach and page i'm getting organized stuff's happening things are going on oh and i've almost reached 4,000 um followers on instagram as well so if you don't follow me on instagram please follow me on instagram because i've only got like 80 more people to go until i got 4,000, and then i'm gonna have to do another giveaway i'm just gonna be giving away everything um so please go like my instagram follow my instagram if you're on instagram and don't follow me on instagram instagram uh i think that's been it like and subscribe follow me on instagram go check out my revelry group and comment below if there's anything you want to want me to talk about in a podcast um please do i will somehow manage to fit it in without making my podcast go for three hours where there's a will there's a way when i do this fortnightly hopefully i won't have so much to grow carry on about or try squeeze into my one hour um and yeah please enjoy whatever you're doing whether you're here in australia enjoying the sunshine we've had rain which has hit all our bushfire affected areas um, it has been a massive relief even though everything is now flooding because it's Armageddon apparently um, but at least it's helping put the fires out so if you are here in Australia I hope you're all safe and um, and enjoying this welcome rain that we've got um, and if you are elsewhere in the world where it's freezing cold and snowy at the moment I hope you're enjoying that too um, and staying warm and cuddling up and crocheting and knitting until your tiny little hearts are desired I will see you again in two weeks Goodbye, much love, mwah, bye.